Good evening, great nurses. My name is Laura Gasparis von Frolio, and I'm going to provide a short tutorial on heart murmurs, auscultating heart murmurs. We're going to review four of the most common heart murmurs. And it won't take long, maybe about 10 minutes, and we'll be done. I had posted on great nurses a question uh, for nurses to answer, and um, many people got it wrong. Let me show you what the question is. The question stated, it is best for the nurse to auscultate for heart murmurs by listening, A, in the direction of the blood flow at the intercostal space, B, in the four auscultation areas directly over each valve, C, at the base and the apex of the heart, and D, along the bony ridge of the sternal angle. Now, most nurses pick uh, B is the answer in the four auscultation areas directly over each valve. And that's the wrong answer because you don't listen to the murmur over the heart valve that produced it. The answer is A. You listen in the direction of the blood flow at the intercostal spaces. So let me go on to explain and provide you with a little tutorial on heart murmurs, okay? You know, there are two <clears throat> common causes of a murmur. The first cause of a murmur would be the forward flow of blood. The forward flow of blood through stiff stenotic open valves. So that's one cause of a murmur. The forward flow of blood through stiff stenotic open valves. That whenever you see the word stenosis, that tells you that that murmur was made when that heart valve is open. So if I say mitral stenosis, that tells you that that murmur was made when that mitral valve was open. It wasn't open that good because it was stenotic, but it was somewhat open. And since it wasn't open too good, uh, when the blood flows through that very narrow lumen, you'll hear a murmur. So the first cause of a murmur would be the forward flow of blood through stiff stenotic open valves. Whenever I say stenosis, you say open that whenever you see the word stenosis, that tells you that that murmur was made when that heart valve is open. So I say stenosis, you say open. Another cause of a murmur would be the backward flow of blood. The backward flow of blood through valves that are incompetently closed. Whenever you have a heart valve that just don't close too good, <coughs> the blood will go backwards through it and give you a murmur. That's known as insufficiency. So whenever you see the word insufficiency, that tells you that that murmur was made when that heart valve was supposed to be closed, but since it wasn't closed well, the blood went backwards through it and gave you a murmur. So whenever you see the word insufficiency, that tells you that that murmur was made when that heart valve was supposed to be closed. I say insufficiency, you say close. I say stenosis, you say open. So just to repeat, the two most common causes of a murmur would be the forward flow of blood through stiff stenotic open valves or the backward flow of blood through valves that are incompetently closed. Now, whenever you listen to a murmur, you've got to be in the right place. If you're not in the right place, you're not going to hear the murmur. So, there are four areas. The first area is the aortic area. Now, most people would think that you would listen to the aortic valve on the left side of the heart because that's where the aortic valve is. But you listen to the aortic valve on the right side of the chest because the aortic valve sends the blood, even though it's on the left side of the chest, or the left side of the heart, it sends the blood to the right side. So you listen to aortic murmurs on the right side, second intercostal space. You listen to pulmonic murmurs even though the pulmonic valve is on the right side of the heart, you listen to the pulmonic valve on the left side of the chest, the second intercostal space. So you have aortic and pulmonic. And then the mitral valve is heard at the fifth intercostal space, midclavicular line in this area here, and here. And then the tricuspid area is heard near the left sternal border, fourth, fifth intercostal space around here. So you have the aortic, pulmonic, mitral tricuspid, aortic on the right side, pulmonic on the left side, and then mitral and then tricuspid. So you gotta be in those areas in order to hear the murmur. Now whenever you listen to a murmur, 
there are two noises it will make. You'll either, either hear a systolic murmur or you'll hear a diastolic murmur. Now a systolic murmur is lub, murmur, dub. A diastolic murmur is lub, dub, murmur. So a diastolic murmur is lub, dub, and then the murmur. Because, you know, an S1 is the closure of the mitral tricuspid valves. Whenever your mitral and tricuspid valve closes, you get an S1. After your mitral and tricuspid valve closes, you're then going to be in systole and squeeze the blood out of your heart. After all the blood comes out of your heart, then the pulmonic and the aortic valve will close and you'll get an S2. And then after the aortic pulmonic valve closes, you're now going to be in diastole, you're going to fill, and that's when you hear the murmur, a diastolic murmur. So a diastolic murmur is lub-dub murmur, lub-dub murmur, lub-dub murmur, lub-dub murmur. So closure of the mitral tricuspid valves, then you're in systole, closure of aortic pulmonic valves, now you're going to fill, and that's when you hear a murmur. So a diastolic murmur is lub-dub murmur. Love dub murmur. Now a systolic murmur occurs during systole. So what you're going to hear is closure of the uh, pulmonic and the mitral valve. That'll give you an S1. Then your ventricles are going to be in systole. You're going to squeeze the blood out. That's when you're going to hear the murmur. Then your aortic pulmonic valves are going to close and you're going to get an S2. So it's love, murmur, dub. Love, murmur, dub. Love, love, dub. Murmur, dub. So the two murmurs that you will hear, either diastolic murmur or systolic murmur. You're either going to hear lub, dub, murmur, or you're going to hear lub, murmur, dub, lub, murmur, dub. And it's very important that when you are reading that someone has a certain kind of murmur, you sing that tune in your head as you're going into the room. That if you see it's a systolic murmur, you're going to be singing lub dub. You're going to be singing lub murmur dub, lub murmur dub. If you see it's a diastolic murmur, you're going to be singing lub dub murmur, lub dub murmur. So when you go into the room and you put your stethoscope on their chest, you hear it very good. So now let's go through the four common murmurs. Mitral stenosis. Let's say you're reading somebody's chart that they have the murmur mitral stenosis. You say to yourself, mitral stenosis is a murmur that is made whenever the mitral valve is open, right? I say stenosis, you say open. I say insufficiency, you say close. All right. So mitral stenosis is a murmur that is made whenever the mitral valve, mitral valve is open. And when is the mitral valve open? You would say the mitral valve is open when the blood is flowing from the left atrium down into the left ventricle, the mitral valve is open. And when the blood is flowing from the left atrium down into the left ventricle, that's diastole, the left ventricle's filling. So your mitral valve is open during diastole, when the left ventricle is filling. So if the mitral valve is open, right, because mitral stenosis means the murmur is made when the mitral valve is open, when is the mitral valve open? During diastole. Therefore, it's a diastolic murmur. You're going to walk into the room and you're going to sing Lub Dub Murma, Lub Dub Murma, Lub Dub Murma. And where are you going to put your stethoscope? Over here in the mitral area. I say here that uh, mitral stenosis is low pitch, crescendo. You don't have to know crescendo, deep crescendo. It's a rumbling noise, and that it is. And you hear it at the apex, and it increases when you put the patient in the left lateral position. But it is rumbling. So when you listen to mitral stenosis, it's a rumbling noise. You're going to hear lub dub, and then the murmur, which is rumbling. You're going to hear lub dub brr, lub dub brr, lub dub brr, lub dub brr. That's what you'll hear. Lub dub brr, lub dub brr. A lot of a lot of nurses think it's water in the ventilator tubing. They think it's water. You know, when you're on a vent, you get some condensation in the tubing, they think it's that. They're like, you know, I've been disconnecting this. I've been, I've been emptying this all day long. I don't know what's happening. I'm like, yeah, you, you keep disconnecting him from the vent. The, the, the noise will go away. Okay. And the causes would be calcification of the leaflets. So mitral stenosis is a diastolic murmur, and you're going to hear, lub dub brr, lub dub brr, lub dub brr. All right, let's talk about another murmur. 
You're reading somebody's chart that they have the murmur of aortic insufficiency. You say to yourself, aortic insufficiency is a murmur that is made whenever the aortic valve is supposed to be closed. When is the aortic valve supposed to be closed? You say that aortic valve is closed when the left ventricle is filling. Therefore, the aortic valve is closed during diastole. Therefore, if I read that someone has aortic insufficiency, that tells me that that murmur is made during diastole. Because aortic insufficiency means that the murmur is supposed to be, I'm sorry, means that the valve is supposed to be closed. When is the aortic valve closed? During diastole. Therefore, it's a diastolic murmur. I'm going to go into the room, and as I'm walking into the room, I'm going to sing, love dub murmur, love dub murmur, love dub murmur. And the murmur of aortic insufficiency is blowing. I have here, it's high pitch, decrescendo, you don't have to know that. Blowing noise, heard on the right side, even though it's the aortic valve, you hear it on the right side, second intercostal space, that increases with exhalation. So what you're going to hear with aortic insufficiency is, lub-dub, 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 and you have to be in this area. If you hear, 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 you're not going to hear it. You have to be in the area. So right now, we learned about two murmurs. We learned mitral stenosis, lub dub brr, lub dub brr. And we learned aortic insufficiency, lub dub brr, lub dub brr. Some of the causes would be systemic hypertension and rheumatic heart disease, which is probably the most common cause of any murmur. Let's do another murmur. Here you go. You're reading in somebody's chart that they have the murmur of aortic stenosis. You say to yourself, aortic stenosis is a murmur that is made whenever the aortic valve is open. Because remember, I say stenosis, you say open. I say insufficiency, you say closed. So aortic stenosis is a murmur that is made whenever the aortic valve is open. When is the aortic valve open? During systole. Therefore, it's a systolic murmur. Well, I'm going to go into the room and I'm going to hear love murmur dub, love murmur dub in the aortic area, right? Right side, second intercostal space. But aortic stenosis is a holosystolic murmur. It's a pansystolic murmur, which means it occurs all throughout systole, which means it's so loud you don't even hear the love dub. You just hear the murmur. And the murmur of aortic stenosis is very rough, gruff, and harsh. Sounds like someone's clearing their throat. And it radiates all over. <clears throat> That's aortic stenosis. Very rough, gruff, and harsh. So, causes of aortic stenosis, calcification of the valves, and rheumatic heart disease or rheumatic heart fever. So, aortic stenosis, very rough, gruff, and harsh. <laughs> you, you can hear it up here even. And people who have aortic stenosis hear it also. I just had uh, a patient with aortic stenosis, very loud. And I said to him, you know, you want my stethoscope so you can hear your murmur? He's like, I don't need a stethoscope. I hear it in my head. I'm like, what do you mean? He says, I hear it all day long. I said, you're kidding. So when you lie down and go to sleep, put your head on a pillow, you hear, <clears throat> you hear that? He says, every night. I said, I'd kill myself if that happened. I think I hear water dripping. I'm ready to jump off a bridge. So then he said, it's not that bad. You get used to it. It's like a bad house smell. I said, you know, you're going to live a long time. You've got a good attitude. Now, little old ladies always have aortic stenosis because they got the calcification of the valves right and little old ladies always have atrial fib i dare you to find a little old lady who doesn't have a fib so when you have someone with atrial fibrillation and aortic stenosis which is very rough gruff and harsh what you're going to hear is this <laughs> You're going to hear that. Nurses always put scattered ronchi, scattered ronchi. Patient has scattered ronchi, right? Because everyone's put down scattered ronchi. Because you can never be wrong if you say scattered ronchi. Because you're really not pinpointing exactly where you heard it. So you're never wrong. 
and nurses always put scattered bronchi. So when someone has aortic stenosis with atrial fib, you're going to hear, <clears throat> and then you walk into the room, and she's like, you know, I've been suctioning all day long. I can't seem to get that. In the, I, I can't seem to get that out. I'm, I'm suctioning all day long. I'm like, you keep disconnecting her from the ventilator and suctioning this 92-year-old. Uh, the mom, uh, the, that noise will go away. Don't worry about it. All right, let's do... Oh, last murmur. You're reading somebody's chart that they have the murmur of mitral insufficiency. You say to yourself, mitral insufficiency is a murmur that is made whenever the mitral valve is supposed to be closed. When's the mitral valve supposed to be closed? So you have the left atrium, mitral, and left ventricle. So when is your mitral valve closed? Your mitral valve is closed when the ventricles are in systole. Therefore, mitral insufficiency is a systolic murmur. Gonna walk into the room and you're gonna sing, love murmur dub, love murmur dub, love murmur dub. But mitral insufficiency is a holosystolic murmur. It's a pan-systolic murmur, which means it occurs all throughout systole, which means it's so loud you don't even hear the love dub. You just hear the murmur. And here it says it's high pitched, blowing. And it's heard at the apex, and it radiates. It radiates to the axilla, and it increases with squatting. Although I don't, I don't think you get people out of bed and have them squat on the floor. But anyway, uh, so what mitral insufficiency? And we're in the mitral area here. It's just blowing. That's it. Just plain old blowing. Some of the causes would be a myocardial infarction, especially an inferior wall and rheumatic heart disease. So, just to review all the murmurs that we have heard, we learned mitral stenosis, right? Mitral stenosis, diastolic murmur. Lub dub brr, lub dub brr, lub dub brr, because it's rumbling. Then we learned mitral insufficiency, a systolic murmur. Just blowing, no lub dub, because it's a holosystolic murmur. Then we learned aortic insufficiency. Aortic insufficiency in the aortic area, which is on the right side, second intercostal space, is blowing. So you're going to hear, since the diastolic murmur, lub dub, and then the murmur, which is blowing. Lub dub, lub dub. So aortic insufficiency is lub dub, lub dub. And then we learned aortic stenosis, which is a systolic murmur a holosystolic murmur, so you don't even hear the lub-dub. Aortic stenosis is very rough, gruff, and harsh, and it radiates, so you'll hear <coughs> So those are the four common murmurs. I hope you uh, enjoyed this little short tutorial. We'll be doing them pretty frequently. Uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and uh, and Great Nurses, uh, I have a website, greatnurses.com, and uh, I'll see you in a few days, all right? Thank you. If you have any questions, just uh, uh, put them in the comment box, and I'll get back to you. Thank you.